This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex, and this is The Ramble. We go until midnight tonight from New York City. So listen, ladies and gentlemen, whenever I want to have my life reaffirmed, I call up Larry Bubbles Brown, and he tells me all the wonderful things it is to be alive. Yes, I... To be alive. <laughs> we, uh, we will get you through the collapse of the banking system. and you know, The only French term that I can think of that describes Larry is joie de vivre. <laughs> you know, um, it's the only French I speak, but he's full of joie de vivre. A young Marie Chevalier. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what was it again that uh, that uh, Attell called you? Um, My dust bowl good looks. Your dust bowl good looks. Yeah, you really, <laughs> you know, you have a, I don't know why you never did more character roles. You were in some movies, right? I did a couple movies. I was, uh, what was I? You were in a uh, Robert Altman film? I was, I uh, didn't know, uh, the, uh, what was uh, it? Uh, Alan, Alan, P Alan Parker. Parker. Alan Parker. Bir Birdie. And then I was in, uh, I was in The Kite Runner, mm -hmm. which was a big book, which, uh, the book was more successful than the movie. So. Well, how big a part was, were you in The Kite Runner? I had three lines. I drove a big Mustang into a gas station. That was it. But it was kind of fun. Fill her up, thank you, and I'll see you later. Right? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, and any other movie? What other movies? There were a couple of others, weren't there? I did a movie about car dealers called Suckers. That was actually a pretty funny movie. And uh, what else? I can't remember. I think. See you... something on TV. There was a TV show I did called uh, Trauma. That was kind of fun. And, yeah, yeah, but they I'm, called the uh, the director. Let's see, no, I, the, one of the actors called me and they said we talked about you. You'd be great as re would you be interested in doing a recurring character? I said, oh, that'd be great. And then of course the show got canceled. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me see here, Larry Bubbles Brown. Let me put this in uh, um, uh, Bubbles. Did you always list yourself as Larry Bubbles Brown on, on credits? No, well, no, I don't. Larry, I think Larry, I never did on the Brown. Okay, Larry Brown. Let's and see there's here. like eight of them in SAG. So. Oh, okay. Here's Larry Brown. Larry Brown, actor, kite runner. So that's got to be you. All right. Yeah. Well, let's see what it lists as you being your movie. Here we go. Here's the list of all of Larry's movies. One sided. Wow, I never looked at this. One sided affair. No. No. That's interesting because I got some residual checks for movies I didn't do, and I called SAG, and uh, he goes, what's your Social Security number? And I gave it to him, and he goes, oh, my God. And I said, what? He said, there's another Larry Brown whose Social Security number was one digit off mine. No. Yeah. What are the chances of that? I can't believe it. I don't. But this was supposedly a movie, and it says one sided affair in Pest Man? No. You don't remember that at all. Maybe that's what you got to no. check for, huh? I think it was a, for a movie that was. Uh, maybe was there a Jack Reacher movie that Tom Cruise did or something? No, this well, is... you'll read some more of them. <laughs> I should look at this. Well, yes. well here, uh, trauma. I was in trauma. Yes, you're in trauma. One episode. Okay, there we go. And uh, now the kite runner. Kite runner. Gas station customer. Right. You know, none of these characters you played, any of them, have names. Okay. Then in Suckers, you were Pathetic Customer. Pathetic Customer, yes. And in Royal Destiny, oh, you were Brian. In Royal Destiny, do you know that film? I was not in that, no. Oh, okay. So really, you're only in four films. Okay. Okay. 
But then the other ones, you have to send the checks back. Uh, yeah, I sent them back. Uh, it says here, uh, trivia. Did you know trivia, known for deadpan, self-deprecating humor, has been a stand-up in San Francisco since the early 1980s? <laughs> Who puts that shit in there? <laughs> I don't know. They have it. They get it. Oh, I, I, I used to, when I put in Alex Bennett, I used to get something come up in, in here. Let me, try it, let me try that, Alex Bennett. I doubt it, though, anymore. I think I saw it disappear, kind of. Alex Bennett, let me see here. S Pillow Talk now, self. Uh, across Killing Bay, makeup department, sound department, no. More popular searches, Alex Bennett. Well, there's Alex Bennett alone. Let's see if that comes up with anything that looks like I know it does. It's zero. Nothing. Used to be it would come up. I had a couple of, I had a couple of things in here. But uh, no. Uh, actor. No. Knife crime. Uh, actor. Connections. Uh, actor. Uh, no. I don't see it anywhere. You here. should be in there for hosting uh, comedy tonight. I should be. But no. no. I used to be in there. It used to be a couple of credits that I had. You did that for how many years? Comedy Tonight I did, I think, five years, was it? And then I was replaced. The part of Alex Bennett, they should have said on the show, the part of Alex Bennett will now be played by Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. Um, because she wound up hosting the show for one season, and that was when I got dumped, you know. So. Uh. And where was, uh, where did they tape those? They used to tape those at what is now Cobbs, which was then the... Uh, oh, well, then Wolfgang. Wolfgang's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. So we did them there. We did all, all of them there, actually. Um, and do you remember any acts that stood out? Uh, I mean, we had a lot of people on there that were acts that kind of stood out. Uh, uh, you know, Goldthwaite, of course, was there in, on that show. Were, did you ever do the show? I came close, didn't quite get it. I remember, uh, you know who I saw kill on that show and uh, was uh, Jack Gallagher. Jack Gallagher did great on that show. Yeah. Um, uh, the one thing that I always remember, though, uh, is Jeff Dunham. Uh, and, and now, he does not come, in my opinion, under the list of great comics, okay? Now, Dunham, we were talking about guys who make it, who maybe shouldn't have. Dunham was my candidate for that. I mean, it, he had nothing but racist puppets. Oh, Sen really? <laughs> oh, yeah, Senior Jalapeno. Uh, you know, uh, just uh, that alone would not get him on television Senior anymore. Jalapeno. I'm laughing. He looked like a jalapeno pepper. Yeah, you know? that's hilarious. But anyway, and he had this grunchy, this grumpy old guy. Okay, that's what made him famous. Was the gump, grumpy old guy. And he was a ventriloquist. So now uh, it's we're we're down in the basement of Wolfgang's, and the, who was that? Who was that? I have to say it, midget who used to take photographs. Do uh, you remember his name? You're good at this stuff, Randy. Uh, uh, I do yeah. know. I know who you mean. He was killed yeah. uh, by a car accident. Yeah, yeah he didn't see him probably. Uh, he, he, but he was like a, a midget basically. He had to stand up on chairs to take pictures. He took all the pictures, yeah. On, uh, yeah. Um, he was a great photographer. I think his name he was, was, yeah. I seem to remember the name Randy something. But anyway, so he's taking our pictures, right? He's going to take our pictures. And I, it's me, and then there's the grumpy old man dummy, okay? And then Dunham is sitting next to the dummy on the other side, right? And at one point, Dunham looks at me and goes, Alex, I hear you don't like uh, what you don't like uh, prop comics. And I looked at him and I said, no, it's ventriloquists that I hate. <laughs> and he doesn't bat an eyelash. But the dummy turns around to <laughs> looks at me and bears his teeth. Wow. That was so spooky. That was like out of those movies where you got a ventriloquist yeah. dummy that comes up. You know, you, a picture that just, I can't remember the name of it, uh, the great Gabo, Eric von Stroheim, was in it. And it's all about a guy who has a ventriloquist dummy. 
And at the oh, end, oh really? At, I didn't know at, Stroheim at did the one at of those. end of the movie. At the mo- end of the movie, the dummy comes to life and kills him. And as a kid, after seeing that, I just was, I had nightmares forever about ventriloquist that's a, that's dummies. That's scary. <laughs> I, I want to see that. So there was never a ventriloquist dummy that didn't look evil to me after that, you know. Um, yeah, there have been several movies about ventriloquists and their dummies. And I think the reason is, is that uh, uh, Slayton told me once, he was working at a club in the South somewhere, and as all those clubs in the, those days did, they had what they called their condo. Uh, they had a, an apartment they rented so that when the comedians came to town, they could put them up in the condo rather than rent a hotel, which would cost them much more. So they du- And they doubled people up, you know, a two-bedroom condo. So that week, Slayton was uh, put up in the same room with a ventriloquist. And um, he said one day he walks in, and the ventriloquist is sitting there with his dummy watching television. (laughs) And they're talking to each other like, Oh Boy, she, I don't think she did that. Do you think she did that? No, she didn't do that. Oh, I think so. You know, and he finally walked over to him and said, "Stop it! <laughs> Just stop it!" Ventriloquists, oh, it ventriloquists are crazy. They're Maybe nuts. They are, yeah. They're nuts. Have you ever met a ventriloquist? Otto and George. Yeah. Well, that's a different story. That was he, uh, that was the best ventriloquist. He had a very vacant look in his eyes. I remember that. Oh, he did. Oh, okay. Because Otto and George were the dirty ventriloquists. They were the re- super dirty. Yeah. Yeah, super dirty. Uh, and it wasn't that. Uh, what was the name? The puppet's name was what? Otto or was he? I think they. Uh, the puppet's name was George. The, the puppet's name was George, and and yeah, and, you would think it was the other way around. Yeah, and George was just this absolutely mean puppet, and yeah. and dirty. Just filthy. And the people love that act. I mean, I remember that was like Slayton's favorite act. <laughs> it was fun to watch. Yeah, everybody everybody loved Otto and George. I never saw them. Never saw them. Probably, I guess if I went on YouTube, I could find them. Oh, he's all over, I think, YouTube, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should be all over YouTube. But yeah. nobody ever videotapes you, so, you know. Oh, I, I don't know that you find yourself... Uh, I wish you'd be nice if you get yourself off the Internet uh, completely. Yeah. Why doesn't somebody come up with that service? What? Just no... Erasing you from the Internet if you don't want to be on there. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, if we erased you from the Internet, every show I've ever done with you would now <laughs> disappear. But, you know, uh, I, uh, you know, it's it, so, I mean, it, you know... It, it, we have uh, ventriloquists who are just crazy. They're nuts. They're out of their mind. And uh, I, 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 what kind of woman would want to marry a ventriloquist? Just tell me that well, right I, now. Yeah. What were the? Yeah, you're right. There were. There's been several movies about crazy ventriloquists. What were? There was a Chucky. But no, Chucky was a doll. Okay. Ch- Chucky was a toy. A doll. Toy. There was but, some, I remember some ventriloquist movie from the 60s when I was a kid. It was kind of scary. Well, there was one with Anthony Hopkins called Magic. Okay, I yeah. think that's it. Yeah, that's the one you're probably thinking of. But, I mean, I mean just, uh, it, we used to hear stories from, uh, um, what do you call it, um, Candace Bergen. Because she was Ed, Edgar Bergen's daughter. Uh, and Edgar Bergen, in case people don't know who we're talking about, because back in the day, if I'd mentioned, oh, Edgar Bergen, today they go, who was Edgar Bergen? Edgar Bergen had a, uh, 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 puppet by the name of Charlie McCarthy, a, a dummy by the name of Charlie McCarthy, and they were a v- eminently po- popular, uh, ventriloquist act, so much so that he had a radio program. Yeah, my father told me about him. My father loved him. Did he have a uh, uh, character named Mortimer Snurd? Mortimer Snurd. And then they, okay. they had a woman by the name of Effie. Oh, I can't remember her last name. But uh, they, they, he had a couple of dummies. But the, the other one was Mortimer Snurd. And if you were a kid, you probably liked Mortimer Snurd more than you liked uh, 
Charlie because Charlie wore a monocle and he sometimes wore a tuxedo and he was fancy and all of that. But Mortimer Snurd was just this dumb guy with an overbite, you know. And um, But she talks about it that Charlie McCarthy in their home had his own room. God. You know. And, um, you know, they would keep Charlie McCarthy like sitting in a chair or lying in a bed in that room. And that room was simply, that was Charlie's room. And she said it was terrible being brought up in that atmosphere because you either felt that he had to be considered your brother or it was just you were always being compared to him. You're not as good as the dummy. (laughs) You know? Yeah, it, 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 it almost sounds like these guys are schizophrenic or something. It's it's a duality that happens, I think. You know, I mean, you're, you're talking to yourself, but which is probably better than talking to yourself. You know, but uh, um, it was a, it was a, and it was a great act. I mean, as a kid, I loved Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Who didn't? But then they were on radio, and you would go. This was a, a joke that was done in Woody Allen's radio days where the kid says the same thing I think I said to my parents once when we were listening to Charlie Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy on radio. How do we know his lips aren't moving? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, it's radio. You don't know if his lips are moving or not. You don't even know if he's got the dummy sitting there. Well, he had to have the dummy there because he was doing it in front of a live studio audience. But, you know, you don't know whether his lips are moving. You don't know how good he is at being a vent- In fact, Edgar Bergen was actually a lousy ventriloquist because his lips did move a lot. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some that are so good that you don't even know they're doing it, you know. The great Paul Winchell. Yeah, well, guys, the trouble is... Guys have a trouble being a ventriloquist only because their Adam's apple goes up and down. Even if they're not moving their lips, that, that uh, you know, Adam's apple goes up and down. Now, I've seen female ventriloquists, and they do their act, and there's no way of telling them, you know, that they're, it's coming really? out of their mouth. Yeah. I've never seen a female ventriloquist. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean... Um, it's just I think they're just strange. I think they live through their through their dummy. God, that's scary, isn't it? Yeah, I remember the uh the black ventriloquist, uh, Willie Tyler and Lester. Willie Tyler and Lester. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The the black uh ventriloquist act. Mm-hmm. And what's funny about Willie Tyler and Lester, let me tell you this. There was a do you ever notice there was always a ventriloquist dummy face that kinda looked Irish? You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all of them, no matter who they were. Paul Winchell and Jerry Mahoney, same face as uh, Charlie McCarthy. Um, uh, and then you get to Willie Tyler and Lester, and that's a black dummy. But mm-hmm. he's got this Irish face. You know. <laughs> I never could figure that one out either. G- I'm not Willie Tyler. Great yeah, you know what, what's strange is you and I are reminiscing about stuff that I probably would have reminisced with my friend Shecky. You know? Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that because I got the bad news from you last week. And uh, oh, I didn't. I tell you uh, in one of my messages that that's you said he passed, and I was just uh, I was upset because I always wanted. He sounded like such a great guy. I always wanted to meet him. Yeah, uh, yeah everybody says that to me. Yeah, especially comics. I would, yeah, I would have liked to have met him. You know, and well, he had that amazing all, all these collectibles and stuff. It just sounded like a museum. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was. Um, uh, yeah, uh, he col- well his collectibles were basically little dolls that Warner Brothers would put out, or j- pictures that he had commissioned to have painted of cartoon characters and so on. Uh, he, and that ha- that's a fairly nice collection, but I don't know if it's worth anything. I often said to him, "All this stuff is worth so much." You know, it's not, you know, because he knew what things were worth. He said, nah, he said, this stuff will all wind up in the dumpster outside the house once I die. Well, it sounded like he had some baseball cards that were worth quite a bit of money. Yes. So he told me that. Now, I don't know if that's, you know, untrue until they're found, you know. I mean, he died. You know what I, What got to me about it is I wonder why is it affecting me so badly? And I don't think that there was ever anybody 
closer to me than Shecky was. And I've never had anybody that close to me die. You know? I yeah, mean, it's traumatic. And I know if they say, well, how about your wife, Alex? Well, I've only been married to her for 10 years. I knew Shecky for 45. You know? Or 11 years, whatever. But I, I knew Shecky for 45 years. And and that, that can get to you. You know, you can really, really throw you for a loop. Because I've never had anybody that close to me die. I had my father die. He died at 59. Boy, that was a tragedy. Um, but, and I know that I was very upset about that because nobody could be closer to you than your father. You yeah. Know? Uh, but, I mean, as a friend in my lifetime, nobody's been closer than Shecky, and it's been a relationship that is maintained over 45 years. It wasn't like there was 20 years we didn't even talk to each other. You know. Where did you meet him? I was introduced to him by, uh, I was a birthday present. <laughs> a friend of his, Steve Weiner, who I knew, um, had me come to a lunch for his birthday. And the reason I was asked to go there was to be a present for him because he always wanted to meet me. Really? Uh, yeah. Because they all listen to me on radio and stuff like that. Okay. And, I, and that's how we met. You know, and uh, I, I'm i still friends with his friend Steve Weiner, but I haven't been that close to Steve Weiner all these years as I have been to Shecky. So it, 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 it was kind of an amazing kind of thing. But well, he, Did he have any family? Huh? Uh, oh, yeah. He had a brother out in Steamboat Springs, and he had a bunch of nieces. And, you know, I mean, there, as I said, there are several levels of, of, of knowing Shecky and being in Shecky's orbit. One of them was you worked for Letterman. That was one orbit, okay? Then there were the people he knew through his going to film festivals and things like that and his movie associations, and that was another orbit. And then there was the family, and that was yet another orbit. And all these orbits didn't ever seem to really meet with each other. I can't say oh. I've ever met his brother. And I've met a couple of the people at Letterman, but very few, you know. And and then there was that really small orbit of people who were just his friends, like me, you know, and, and Steve Weiner. And uh, we're a very small group as opposed to the others. Uh, but uh, I think we were also closer to him than a lot of the others. So it, it, on, on a personal basis, you know. So I mean, it it, uh, it it's amazing. He had a lot of friends. I mean, there were a lot of people who been writing about him and talking about him and so on. And you well, know, I know he was with uh, Letterman almost from the start, right? From uh, from the start of the evening show. Well, the NBC show. He joined them, I think, a month in. Wow. Yeah, and remain there for the rest of the show, becoming, I think, the third longest employee of Letterman. Jeez. Yeah, nobody ever mentions that. That's the, you know. To have to deal with Dave for that many years, God. <laughs> and and the, you told me a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned that he... Uh, you said he was sick, but I had no idea it was that bad. So. I never had. I didn't have the idea it was that bad. Yeah. You know, now it turns out he actually had multiple problems. Uh, at least Leonard Malton, who was very close to him, um, in that film orbit, you know, um, mm -hmm. he he said that he had multiple um, health issues. Oh, now, okay. I only knew about one. Okay, and that was his drinking. Okay, and he'd been drinking for as long as I've known him. Uh, vodka, which is his drink of choice, and I just never, I never figured it was a real problem. I figured, you know, he was kind of an occasional drinker, would have a drink once oh, a day, okay. one of those kind of things. And I think it was far worse than that because there was an element. He died from complications from cirrhosis. Oh, um, geez. Yeah, that's what I think he died of. Nobody's saying, you know. I just have to, you know, put my brain together and figure that one out. But, you know. I don't know much about alcohol, but I know vodka is pretty strong. Well, it's deceptive because it doesn't smell. 
Okay. Yeah. And it's the per, it's the preferred drink. It's clear. Yeah, it's the preferred drink of alcoholics because it doesn't have have it on your breath and it's clear, as you said. <laughs> but anyway, I just you know I, I constantly miss him, and then we just got into this conversation and about Charlie McCarthy, and I went, yeah, this is the kind of discussion I would have with uh, with Shecky. Yeah. But uh, anyway, to, yeah, yeah. So sorry, I never met him. Well, you know, you will eventually. Uh, uh, if you believe anyway well i'll meet him in that big radio station up in the sky that's right (laughs) ladies and gentlemen my pal and a guy that i really love having here and he does it every two weeks for me we sit here and do two episodes uh and i really appreciate that larry Oh, that's what friends are for, bro. I'll say that before I'm dead and can't say it anyway (laughs) ladies and gentlemen larry bubbles brown thanks lawrence Thanks, Alex. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Larry. And, uh, you know, we have that nice little thing like, you know, like these with uh, Rob Alfano. This is GabNet. The Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. See, we have that, and I am uh, I, <laughs> I just wrote Rob to see if he could uh, do one saying nine years, and it uh, he may not be able to because he doesn't have equipment to do it with in the Philippines right now. But anyway, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Also, we have another guy who would like to do it, and he's a very good voice. But, you know, Rob has just been such a tradition with us that I hate to see him, like, disappear from that. Anyway, uh, we only have one person waiting to talk. Oh, now there are uh, two people waiting to talk to us. Okay, all right, well, that's a beginning, I guess, somewhere along the line here. Uh, Hello, Josh Wheeler. And hello to Ray Renati. How are you, Ray? Hello. Hey, Alex. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have that background there, half in there. <laughs> yeah, that's just the... <laughs> because, you know, I mean, if I were to move this back, you'd uh, see the same kind of effect. Ah, yeah, you see now, that that's, yeah. that's kind of good. Yeah. Anyway, hello to both of you. How are you this good. evening? Good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, Josh, I uh, didn't see you last week, but you were out of town, right? Yeah, that's right. What, were you, what were you doing? Uh, my wife and I just went away for a few days to do some of our normal traveling and uh, went to uh, <clears throat> we went to coastal Virginia. We went to Yorktown mm-hmm. and uh, Jamestown for a few days. Mm-hmm. Uh, you 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 always take trips to historic places, don't you? That's your that's your hobby, as it were. Yeah, we, uh, that and you know parks uh, like national parks, uh, you know, uh, scenic and um, you know nature type stuff, that kind of thing. Yeah. How so, how many as, uh, national parks have you seen? Ooh, I don't know, a lot. <laughs> a lot. I'm not sure the number. I don't have the count i mean there are so there are 63 national parks and then there's about another 400 and just over 400 other sites that the park service runs Mm -hmm. that are made up of national historic sites national monuments national battlefields that kind of thing wow so Altogether, they run close to 500 sites. Um, I don't know how many we've been to, and I don't know how many parks. Mm-hmm. I've been to at least probably a third of those. Yeah. Um, By the way, I just noticed I didn't have my Zoom screen up, but I do now, so there you go, folks. Yeah, so quite a few. Um, mm-hmm. And we've hit some of the big players out west, uh, mm-hmm. for sure. So it's... Uh, nice but uh it's you know but it's expensive you can only do so much at one time yeah 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 Yeah. those places are pretty far away and cost a lot of money to get to 
Yeah. Well, anyway. But they're basically, you know, they're basically free or mm -hmm. very low cost. It's one of the nice things the government does do. I got a pass once, a senior pass yeah. or something. Yeah, we we buy the pass every year, yeah. Well, it's but this, was, this wasn't one I had to buy. They said, oh, you're a senior. Here, it's free. Yeah, at a, at a certain point, you know, they, they do give them away uh, for free. You know, like Patrick, you know, because he's in a wheelchair, he could he can just get one for free. Yeah. Well, what yeah, happened was yeah, he, when we were going, when Shecky and I were traveling across the United States, we went to Bryce Canyon. Yeah, I've been there. Yep. Uh, and um, as we went in, uh, they said, "Oh, oh, how old are you?" And I said, "Well, I'm, I'm." He's, they said, "Are you over sixty-five?" And I think I was maybe seventy at the time. I can't remember. Yeah. And they said, "Okay, cool. You know, yeah. you you get this pass, and it's a pass that's good at any of the." you know, the national parks, and you can get in for nothing. However, your friend has to pay full fare because <laughs> so, yeah. he hadn't reached 65 yet. Oh. So. Yeah, you know. Yeah, um, but it's, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to say that uh, when they had, they had the fires and then COVID, and I've been to Yosemite probably six times, mm -hmm. and, and you don't have, there's nobody ever there to pay. You just drive right in. Really? Yeah. Why, why, um, why, why? Yeah. Why At would, times, yeah. you know, they, I, I, I haven't paid the last half dozen times I've gone. I haven't paid. I mean, they ask that people, you know, stop at the pay stations. No, there isn't anywhere to pay. They want you to just come in. Pay. Yeah, it depends right. on the national park. That's just Yosemite. Of course, I what know. I found about right. Yosemite, Shecky and I uh, went to visit Yosemite once. This was an entirely different time. And um, they, uh, I think you had to make a reservation. To be able, even able to get on the well, on the ground. No, no, you can drive in. Anyone could drive in. You have to have a reservation to stay somewhere. No, no, it, it depends. I mean, there are some parks now, with as busy as they've gotten, that did move to what's called a reservation system, and it's not for a particular time. But what you can do is you can get a, you basically get like a window of entry, um, and they start giving them away. They're all a little different. You know, some most of them are 90 days in advance. The reservation is free, but what you do is you say, you know, I want to visit the park on this day, and that's the day that you know that you're allowed in. It's not a particular time or anything. And then they usually give you either a three-day window or a seven-day window that it's good for. Like if you miss that day or whatever, you know, you're traveling out there and you get held up or whatnot. It's not as if your window is gone. They'll give you a three-day or a seven-day and then some of the parks don't do it for entry, but they do it for something within the park that is basically considered like the main attraction. That's mm. what Yosemite does. You know, so that it's virtually the same as for entry, you know, in a way. Uh, like Glacier National Park, for example, last year didn't have a reservation system for the park. But it did have a reservation for the main attraction, which is called the Going to the Sun Road. That people, that's the main thing people go there for, is to drive that scenic route. And you had to have a reservation for it. So I think yeah. last year, there only six parks ended up doing it. Um, you know, it's just to try to cut down on the overcrowding, you know. Uh, well, like last year, I, uh, I hiked to Half Dome and I, ha mm -hmm. I had to. Uh, I, I applied probably 10 times before I got the yeah. pass to do it. Yeah, some of them are, you know, difficult. But I mean, we've never yeah. had any trouble because my wife keeps up on it. And, you know, they start giving away the tickets 90 days in advance. So if you get on yeah. the reservation system, you know, on that 90th day away from the day that you want in, it's usually okay. And it basically it just limits the amount of people that can go on a day. You know, the alternative is to just close the park when it gets too busy and bum people out, which is what, you know, some of the parks do. Like Arches National Park in Utah has gotten so busy the last few years that they've had many days where at like 11 or 12 o'clock, they've just closed the park for the day and either said we might or may not reopen. And then I've also heard that at times they allow people to basically just sit in line and they do a one in one out deal. Every time a car leaves, they let a car in, but people sit for hours to, you know, so, 
the parks have been really crowded the last couple of years. Um, you know, one of the only decent things that Trump did uh, during his time was, you know, he did support and sign the Great Outdoors Act, which finally gave, you know, hundreds of millions, if not like a billion, almost a billion dollars to the National Park Service to finally divvy up between all of its 500 sites um, for infrastructure upgrades, you know, fixing some of the roads and parking areas and things like that. And, you know, the Park Service had not been funded very well. Wait a minute, Trump did something for Trump did something for yeah. us? I mean, he signed the bill. I don't know if it was, you know, exactly his idea or anything. Oh, you know, okay. But, <laughs> you know. Didn't Congress seem passed it, and he didn't oppose it. Well, so. I thought the Republicans were trying to take back money from the parks. Well, they have not been kind to them at times, that's for sure. So how did they, man you know, they manage to get that one through? Why, what made them I, It was like, that's what I'm saying, is it was kind of a miracle in a way. It was one of the decent things to come out of his administration because the parks were woefully underfunded for many years. And, you know, some of them were starting to fall apart. I mean, which is very sad. I mean, some of these places that you think are, you know, these amazing places like Yosemite or Yellowstone or whatever, mm -hmm. at times you go places and, and there is all that beauty, but then you also see these old, out of date, you know, buildings falling apart and, you know, not as handicap accessible as you would think, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, even though the government owns them, right? They don't even meet some of their own regulations yeah. in some ways. And, uh, you know, that's pretty sad because the parks belong to all the people, right? I mean, that was Theodore Roosevelt's uh, thinking, and that was his line, uh, and it, it hasn't changed. And, uh, yeah. you know, to me, you know, Patrick has just as much right to visit the national parks as you and I do. And some of them are inaccessible right. to him because they're not handicap right. handicapable. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, right? Or the or what is there is in disrepair, you know, mm -hmm. and that's not right, you know. So I'm right. glad that they're fixing some of that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you're right. I mean, the you know we buy this pass every year that is eighty bucks and it gets you into all the parks many times as you want during you know? what so, a given uh, year, right? Yep, in a year. Yeah, we buy. We just pay eighty bucks a year. You know. Uh, yeah, we 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 do a lot of that, and uh, you know, it's it's rewarding, and I think the park service, you know, does a nice job, and people can argue about it or whatever. But you know, I mean, when we visited Little Rock, Arkansas, well, it's in the one fall, of the it's one of the really nice things we have, you know. Yeah, right. And the fact that they I mean, didn't want to, you know. Yeah, and it's very educational, and, uh, you know, that's what I was saying. When, when we visited Little Rock in the fall, and we went to Little Rock mm -hmm. Central High, uh, you know, home of the Little Rock Nine, who were in that famous back and forth with the governor of Arkansas mm -hmm. and the National Guard and all that, you know, we took a tour that walks you up and down the street where all the action happened and, you know, the, where the National Guard was there to supposedly to help the black kids get in school, but ended up not helping right. them at all right. and you know we were given a tour by a by a black mm -hmm. park ranger um and the tour that he gave was really great and he gave mm -hmm. a little disclaimer at the beginning that he was going to give you some real facts and if you found those offensive he wasn't going to apologize for it and you know yeah. <laughs> i don't know what's going on there what, and uh, uh what, what's all that noise brian <laughs> what did your did your lovely daughter start playing music? No. What? Yeah. And there was a well. There was a school group there yeah. the day that we went of like middle school kids, and you know he really mm -hmm. laid it out for them, you know, and he was talking about you know hey these kids were basically the same age as you, and you know they did this deal where you know he was going mm -hmm. up and down through the crowd and he was kind of you know, acting like he was in people's face and he used the word nigger yelling at them a couple of times. And he said, you know, this is what happened here. This is what yeah. this was like. And I, I found it educational. You know? um, Vernon. I just looked it up and the Great Outdoors Act was signed on August the 5th of 2020, which means that the Democrats controlled 
the House and the Senate. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah, so don't, that, don't give Trump credit for it. <laughs> I mean, well, he signed it, but... He well, I mean, he could have stood in the way, but he didn't. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he promoted it. You know, I remember at the time it, it was promoted, you know, so... I mean, it was... Uh, I mean, you know, look, I'm fair. I don't care where the money came from. It's just nice to see that it is happening. And mm -hmm. and since then, we've been to places where, you know, there's things going on. And, you know, they have a little sign up that says, you know, paid for with money by the, you know, your tax dollars. You know, the Great American Outdoors Act. And, you know, and you're looking at something that obviously needed remodeling or replacement or repair. And there it is. It's happening. And, you know, that's really? the way it should be. Uh, every but, August but, 4th is free entrance day. What? Yeah, they do have a couple of those every year. Veterans Day is usually free, and mm -hmm. uh, they have four or five others, mm -hmm. you know, depending on. Well, like I said, I you know, I thought it was interesting to go to somewhere like Little Rock and, you know, be given a tour by a park ranger who, like I said, gave a disclaimer at the beginning that said you're going to you're gonna get the story of what happened here, and you're going to find some of it offensive. And, you know, like I said, you heard the word nigger, you know, I mean, you know. I mean, with a group of school kids there, and he just said, you know, this this girl walked up and down this street of a thousand people and, and was called that over and over and over again. And that's the famous picture you see of her sitting on I'm the I'm trying to remember what her name crying. was. I, I, one time I knew her name. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. But, you know, I mean, it's moving stuff when you go there. You know, mm -hmm. he talks about, you know, how she knew that it wasn't, all rosy and everything but you know mm -hmm. she'd stayed up late the night before and sewn her own dress and she thought if she had a nice dress and looked nice the the white kids would accept her and all that you know i mean it and it just is just lays out you know mm -hmm. what happened in this country during that time i mean there mm -hmm. i didn't find any any political bend to it or anything i mean it was just a nice tour and you can mm -hmm. go places like that and just get yourself informed if you so choose, you know. So, anyway, Brian, we, we like doing it, you know. We go other places too. But Brian, how do you think the next generations are going to treat the national parks? I mean, you know, so many kids that want to stay home, you know, they go for field trips there, but yeah. kids are staying home and not going out, and you know, the the cars thing is a big thing. You know, a lot of these old cars, all these old timers have been passing away, and all these big collections just get disappeared so it's uh yeah. interesting how a lot of the stuff the other generations are dying off things that happen well i think yeah that, yeah i think right. that the problem that we have is we we're, we're starting to lose a lot of our our legacy um <laughs> i was mentioning and maybe it was last week that the thing that bothered me about the passing of my friend rick shecky was that the amount of knowledge that he had about film uh, which he had passed along to all of us. I mean, anybody who talked to him, he would pass along this piece of information or that piece of information. But the fact of the matter is, as time goes on, people have less respect for what went before, uh, uh, before them. And in the case of film, that's being totally lost. I mean, you know, I mean, these people who collect silent films and and keep the legacy of silent films alive there are very few of them what's going to happen in another couple of years are they really going to care you know uh are they really going to care about some of this uh this simple stuff no i don't think so and i think we have a tendency to have our legacy die and um uh i you know who knows what's going to happen to these things will will future generations have respect for these uh national parks you know yeah. uh right. and and uh you know i apparently uh it took a bunch of democrats to get that 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 stuff passed as somebody just mentioned here um mm -hmm. you know i mean it's just it's just it, it's terrible that we we really don't care about our legacy and about our past and what went on in our past and uh who cares the least are the kids today they really don't care you know so anyway yeah yeah i mean you know mm -hmm. they are at least busy right now everywhere we go is you know mm -hmm. has high attendance and 
we did see a lot of school groups for example uh this past trip that we took both at jamestown and at yorktown uh specifically at jamestown um but you know i mean they are kids they didn't seem to be paying attention they were kind of screwing off but it's kind of a boring vacation you know, I mean, I'm, yeah. they're in middle school i mean that's what middle school kids do i guess yeah. Well, you know, I just think that people should have a curiosity of all that went before them. You well, know, when I when I right. was a kid, I, I was very well aware of, of stuff that happened before I was born. And I think I owe that to my yeah. father, who, for instance, uh, used to turn me on to music from the past, you mm -hmm. know. And um, so I had, a, I had a, a, an idea of what went on before I was born, and I was fascinated by that. All my life I've been fascinated by that. So, you know, it's just a shame. Yeah. It's just that a does shame. seem to be, you know, waning a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, you know, I was thinking of uh, uh, Brian as I was watching your young child there. Is she still in back of you there? Yeah. Because I see that that purple light. What's the purple light? It's a UV light. Yeah, and what's it use? What's she using it for? <laughs> That's what uh, she's using it for. To be annoying. Yeah. Well, here's what I'm thinking about her. She reminds me of a cat. Now I'll tell you why. Let me explain this. If you watch a lot of these news programs, like on MSNBC, where they have, oh, we have our uh, contributors here who are gonna give us their opinion about this particular thing, and then they show them in their home because everything's done by Zoom now. And as they're talking, their cat walks in front of them. Yeah. She's kind of like that, isn't she? Whenever the yeah. camera's on, she, you know, she's just there. She's like a cat. No, you're not. No, no. No. She wants to go get the cat. No, sit down. No, she wants sit down. to. She, wants she, has to. A, she has a UV light, you know, like the secret light. The writing, the pen, mm -hmm. yeah. And they you use UV in it, you can see what the she wrote. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't need to see Okay, it. here, here, that, can, will that get me into the club? Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Right. Okay, <laughs> now you're going out. Oh boy. Well, you know, I just, uh, I, 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 I get a little bit bothered by people who just don't care anymore about anything. Um, I mean, let's be honest about it. How many people do you think in this country right now care about what's going on with Donald Trump? Fewer and fewer. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they could care less. Oh, well, he, he screwed this porn actress, so what? Well, that's not what it's about. Right. Well, you know, what, you know what interesting analysis I heard the other day was it, it, it was about banking, but it can be said about the stuff going on with Donald Trump as well. That we want to get the country back to the point where banking is boring. We, you know, we, what's going on with Donald Trump? Let's get it to where it's in the court system and nobody cares. Well, I mean, you should care. No, I mean, as far as public opinion. Yeah. You know, it's in the courts. That's where it should be. Let the courts adjudicate it and let the chips fall where they will. Well, you see, what he did would probably be illegal in any conditions if, in fact, he, he claimed that that money was being used for something else. He didn't, uh, he didn't right. uh, you know. Uh, and, and so, yeah, no, it's, it, there's nothing illegal about paying somebody hush money. Uh, we have things in this business that everybody knows are called non-disclosure uh, uh, non agreements. And that's essentially what that was. People that could call it hush money, but it, it's really a non-disclosure agreement. You know, we'll pay you $130 if you agree to keep your mouth shut. Right. So, and what, uh, what but, got Trump in trouble were two things. He got yeah. in trouble for two things. And one was he reimbursed Michael Cohen with campaign finance money. And the second thing was he falsified business records to claim it as a business expense. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that, that's for starters, but you got to realize that everybody forgets there's another woman involved in this. There's that Playboy uh, yeah. uh, model uh, who he went with for a while, saw many different occasions. And then she was paid by the National Enquirer to keep her mouth shut. Right. And that's where Pecker came into the picture 
his <laughs> testimony. McDougal, McDougal or McDowell? Yeah, I know, McDowell. I know. You McDougal. find I, t- Tony's going. That's funny, Pecker. Who? <laughs> yeah. Donald. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole incident uh, uh, started with a Pecker and ended with one. So you know, it's <laughs> that's what they say. Um, in her case, though, it was different because that was considered a gift in kind to the campaign. A, a gift in what? A gift in kind. In other words, the National Enquirer paid her to, to be quiet, and they considered that, because it was during the campaign, they considered that a contribution to the campaign in kind. Yeah, yeah. Well, what they did is they, what they did is they told her, just write us a whole article about the whole thing, and then they didn't publish it. It's right. what they call catch and kill, basically. <laughs> And that's what went on there. But there was a lot of stuff going on, and there's a big question as to, you know, whether any I heard of something. Was... I heard something interesting today. You know, five minutes after the announcement that Trump was indicted up in New York, Ron DeSantis decided or announced that he would not cooperate in any kind of extradition process if they tried to extradite Trump from Florida. And And then I heard tonight that Donald Trump is probably going to give himself up because he doesn't want Ron DeSantis to grab the limelight. Well, I think he's going to do it anyway because he's planning on using this as a publicity thing. You know, he's got a film crew ready to follow him and to document the whole thing and so on and so forth, that he looks upon this as a way to, to you know, to make money. Make money. So, I mean... Um, and it's kind of sad. I mean, you know, that he he has to make money that way. But they say in the last week or so, he's made about $2 million for his mm-hmm. campaign. So, you know, I mean, he looks upon it as a fundraising thing. And it's going to be a couple of years before this thing ever goes to court. You know, so it could be that while he is, if he runs for president and gets nominated again... Uh, then this would probably be towards the end of the campaign that he'd have to be going to court. You know. But what I find disgusting is Trump going around saying that they're trying to, they're tr- uh, they, they, he, he's a candidate for president and they're trying to stifle his campaign. Well, he became a candidate for president three years ahead of time. And the reason he did it is so that if they, somebody did indict him, he could make this claim. But the fact was that uh, this was done independently of that. Nobody's trying to stop him from running for president. In fact, he can still run, right? Yeah. Yep. Right. You know. What about some of the federal charges, though? If, if some of the federal charges are laid against him, could that stop him from running for president? No. No. No, he can still run. He can still run. Now, suppose he wins. And now he's sentenced to jail. I mean, what happens there? This this becomes a big mess, doesn't it? Yeah. My my guess my guess is that if he did win, he would serve his term and then go to jail after he's no longer president. That's what I was thinking, yeah. Yeah. But he might not be alive that long. If he was in prison. What were you saying, Jeff? If he was in prison, whoever, let's say the Democrats, could make a decision that he's no longer, he can no longer be the effective president, and therefore he could be terminated. No, they can't, he can't be terminated. Once he's elected, he can't be terminated unless he does something that's illegal. So he, how could be impeached, he could be impeached and removed from office by the Senate. Mm-hmm. But that would require two-thirds vote. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's a big mess. It's a big mess. But I don't care. If the kids don't care, I don't care, you know. And this rule that the that the uh, Justice Department has, people forget, that rule came about because of Spiro Agnew. What rule? The rule that you cannot indict a sitting president. Oh, okay. The Justice Department policy that you cannot indict a sitting president. That came about because of Spiro Agnew. Well, I mean, if the guy, if nobody should be above the law, there seems to be something wrong with that. You know, 
if he's guilty of something? I mean, what if the president turns around, takes a gun, and shoots somebody and kills them? Hmm. And he's now on trial for murder. I mean, they can't throw him out of office? Congress could. Congress could. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, 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 Alan. Alan. Josh is going to be able to answer this best probably, but um, if he is convicted in a federal crime, does that stop him from running for president? Uh, no, it shouldn't. I mean, uh, people serving time in federal prison can run. It's happened before. Oh, and okay. inmates have run, you know, got their name on the ballot somehow, remember? I mean, I don't remember their names, but uh, not in every state, but, you know, I mean. Would they have to let them out of prison in order to serve their term? Really don't know. They didn't win. So. Sometimes, sometimes when these negotiations happen, he may negotiate not going to jail in return for saying, you know, put him on probation and he can't run for president during that time. That might be part of the deal. Well, he says, uh, and I, this was on Drudge tonight, he says he is not going to cop a plea. Hmm. Well, in New York, they're going to find him guilty, you can bet on that. I Well, I don't know if that's going to be that easy, you know. And after they find him guilty, how bad is the, is the, uh, is the fine or the sentence, you know? Because it, it could just wind up being a misdemeanor. You know, they're that's going why, after a felony, though. Hmm? They're going after a felony. They're going after a felony, but they might only come out with a misdemeanor, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. And uh, the question is, if it's only going to be a misdemeanor, then, uh, uh, you know, I mean, haven't we wasted our time? That's why these other things have to happen, why the federal charges have to come along, and the charge in Georgia has to come along, because that's very definitely... Uh, 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 tampering with voting, okay? Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, this is not, uh, uh, I, I don't know what's going to happen with all this. It's, it's a real mess. And then I asked this question last night. If he goes to jail, let's just say he goes to prison, does the Secret Service have to serve with him? <laughs> and what crime did they commit? <laughs> you they know, I mean... Huh? They have, they have they have people in the jail, especially in a federal prison. They're gonna watch them. You know, they, no, but but I bet you I bet you he has to have Secret Service, or he isn't he? Uh, uh, um, well, it's uh, it's not. In, he's entitled to it. Yeah. If if he wants it, um, he can forego it at any time, um, and then ask for it back at any time. Mm -hmm. If he were to serve time somewhere, they would. I'm sure segregate him, and he would get his detail within the parameters of the rules. But you know, just, mm -hmm. they just work on shift or whatever. I mean, you know, coming and going, just like anywhere else. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, I find that doubtful. But you know, we'll see. Well, but I mean, he's entitled. I mean, there's nothing that says he has to have it. He, they yeah, but are, are there uh, do our uh, do our current uh, ex presidents carry a full contingent of Secret Service, or have some of them said, "I don't need that much"? I think they've all taken it, uh, and it's a decent sized, you know, detail. Usually, um, it's obviously not what they have, you know, when they serve, but it's it's you know it's fairly decent. But, um, I, I know some of the vice presidents have turned their theirs down. I don't think any of the former presidents have turned theirs down. Tell you what's uh, uh, what's getting to me here, really, is the fact that uh, Donald Trump has cost New York City a fortune, an absolute <laughs> fortune. Between the four years that we had, uh, we were completely guarding Trump Tower. You know, and then now they don't do it anymore. They've pulled off the, you know, the that but the, the, yeah. you know I mean and now with this thing with this trial think of the money they're spending to just shore up their their security and so on it's it's yeah it's I mean ridiculous yeah. how much yeah. money this city is paying out to do that and not getting reimbursed yeah. for it by the way yeah I mean they did rent the US you know the the US Secret Service they did rent them a 
large space within to uh, basically have as a base of operation and house agents. Oh well, yeah, um, but they during... paid they paid Trump for the space. Right. That's correct. That's what I'm saying. It was a, a pretty inflated number. And, you know, for example, I mean, why yeah. he didn't say, hey, it's on the house, you know, yeah. I mean, come if, on. Uh, you know, if President Obama, for example, had spent, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten days at a time at his home in Chicago and they had went and rented the house next door to his house that Obama just happened to own and he was renting it to the secret service for you know eighty five thousand dollars a month or something like that you know republican leadership would have been upset yeah but I mean, you know i would have been upset. but i don't think they were they were they were <laughs> protecting that property as much as we they protected uh, trump tower yeah and and, trump, and do you know what trump tower also did to the businesses in the area decimated them just decimated them. Uh, I'm surprised that Tiffany's is still in uh, in business. I mean, they're on the corner, but I'm surprised they're still in business. You know, I mean, it's it, it's been devastating to New York the amount of uh, uh, stuff we've had to do. Whole streets were blocked off there for four years. The hmm. the side streets were blocked off for four years. Yeah, I mean. And that, but that impacted traffic. I mean, this guy has been a big, major pain in the ass in so many ways. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, he he made the Secret Service rent uh, uh, properties everywhere that uh, he owned, basically, because he would travel to all of them. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of reporting done on that. I mean, I. Well, reading that they had spent like half a million dollars one year on like golf cart rental fees or something like that. I mean, it was enormous amounts of money. I mean, it, you know, it was oh, exorbitant. I, I'm sure you know, he's pay, he's no. charging the uh, the uh, uh, the Secret Service to stay mm -hmm. at Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, they had they rented a couple suites and they were paying they were paying higher than their normal rate and and. and you know, the Washington Post did a lot of work on this, and they they were also paying. At times, they were paying like you know what we would probably call like the in season rate, even when they were there in the off season. In other words, you know they were paying, and you know they would they would be there in January, and they were paying rates to rent these rooms that 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 place would charge in like you know July in, in the summer tourist season. You know, and in a, a room at Mar a Lago is not you know one hundred and seventy five dollars a night like a hotel. It's Right. You know, I mean, they were literally paying, you know, a few thousand dollars a night per room for agents to have, you know, a room to sleep in. <laughs> so I remember he took no payment for being president. A little ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, I, I yeah. mean, I, like I said, I, I remember reading a report in the Washington Post that said the Department of Defense, for example, had paid like $135,000 or somewhere in that range to rent uh, the apartment next to the Trump apartment in Trump Tower, specifically for the gentleman who carries the nuclear football to sleep when he was in New York because it has to go everywhere the president goes. And that guy that carries it is entitled to a room and it can never be more than so many feet away from the president of the United States and he couldn't sleep in the personal quarters of the Trump family, so they rented the apartment across the hall, and they charged him a full rate. And they had to have it all year. I mean, it was just bizarre stuff, you know? So, I mean, made a lot of money off of that. I mean, it was all out there. I mean, it was in the newspapers, but, I mean, you know. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, he could go on TV tomorrow and say, I price gouged and all the, and, you know, and people, you know, his defenders or Phil would come away. He's a businessman. He's got a right to make money, you know? Okay. But I mean, just, I just, I just find know, it. I just find it. Make sure you say that the next time. That's fine. I, I find it. I guess the, the Trump, uh, the Trump fans, the MAGA people have got to be morons. Okay. And the reason they've got to be morons is, are you really sending this guy money for his defense? Isn't he supposed to be an alleged billionaire? 
I mean, I'm not sending money to a billionaire for his defense fund. I'm sorry. Now, if you'd like to say I'm really piss poor and really I've been lying to you all along and I'm not, then I could see sending him a few bucks here and there. But what kind of moron is, is sending this guy money when he claims to be a multi-billionaire? Well. <laughs> well. <laughs> you know. I imagine yeah. he's even losing money on Trump Tower because I think a lot of people vacated uh, Trump Tower because they didn't want to be there because of just the problems that you know were associated with it. And you know, yeah. so. yes, uh, yes, Tony. You know, it's funny you said that. Like, who's sending money to him, right? Mm -hmm. What I find amazing is, and this is just you know observing it. It just shows you how, like, it's a cult of personality, how people are just not bright. Like, I wouldn't send any politician money, I think. Why do I, why do they need my money? Yeah, and that's from a guy who's not bright saying that, so. <laughs> that's a rich guy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, why would you send anybody money, really? Well, I mean, I mean you, you, send, you listen, you send people money for defense funds when you feel they don't have the wherewithal of the money to, to, to kids defend like my mom themselves. You, you know, you send people uh, money for their campaign when you feel you believe in them. But when they say they've got a couple of billion dollars, let them pay it. Chris, remember Bloomberg? He never, he ran New York and he never took a dime in his own campaign. He was before, uh, doing it himself. But that's a real billionaire, though, when Bloomberg was around. Well, Bloomberg is a legitimate billionaire. Yeah, he's legitimate, yeah. And he was not even taking any donation. Right, right. But, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's amazing. My nose is itching. Excuse me, people. Uh, Remember back when Trump started running for president, he said he was going to self-fund his campaign because he yeah. didn't need your money. Yeah, he's going to take you. Well, take part it. of the reason he didn't need to fund his campaign is because all the media outlets were giving him free publicity. Yeah, they made I mean, he didn't have to buy ads on TV. I think he probably ran the cheapest campaign ever because all these morons at Fox and at, and, and at MSNBC and CNN and all of them, every day were giving him publicity. Uh, there was a need for him to spend money. Yes, Tony. I was, I was I was listening to the news before. I think I don't know if it was CNN. I was on the radio when I was eating dinner. <clears throat> I think it was called. Uh, uh, it might have been Kardashian, the famous lawyer on the OJ team. You know, what he thinks they were talking to him. He thinks his lawyer Trump is going to maybe move the trial out of Manhattan and bring it out to Long Island or maybe out of the state. But what did you say about Kardashian? Though? Though. It was Robert Kardashian, but why? That's did, it. Yeah, Robert. Yeah. Why did you bring up Robert Kardashian? Is it well? Who was the famous? Uh, it was the lawyer. Was that the lawyer from the? Uh, it yeah. might have been the Kardashian. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, Robert Kardashian. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but he, he died. He called it on uh, one of the yeah. one of the uh, tech shows, and he they no, were saying no, 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 no. Robert Kardashian is dead. No, what's the other guy. He's he's he's, the, he, he's the father of some famous sisters. It's the other guy. He's the oh, what's his Alan name? Alan Dershowitz. That's it, Dershowitz. Oh well, Dershowitz yeah. is a Dershowitz. Yeah, yeah. No he's lost his mind. Uh, he really no has he really has lost his mind but he did testify in the uh, in the uh, OJ trial yeah yeah he did yeah well, you know he said he said if I was his lawyer Trump I would ask to move the case uh the, the jury out of Manhattan he thinks New Yorkers can't give him a fair trial he's well right. he's, uh, he, he may be right there's a there's, right, there's, 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 a, there's a case for that yeah you, you know but you know, saying. what are you going to do? Send him somewhere where everybody loves him? You yeah, know? but you just said, like, where's the perfect landing spot for him? Really, he said Staten Island or like Long Island. I'll tell you, I, I think so he's cool. in better shape in New York than he would be anywhere else because New Yorkers have a tendency to believe that they're honest in situations like this and that they won't use their prejudice against him to uh, atone of the nature of their, you know, their decision. That's what I'm thinking. Could be, yeah. uh, you know, and, and uh, I, who knows? It may be settled beforehand. For all we know, he says he's not going to settle. But hey, you know, maybe if he's willing to part with uh, a couple hundred million dollars, that'll buy him out of the whole thing. Unless you got a felonies going there, in which I can't, they got to unseal that, like they said. What are they hiding there? Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll know Tuesday if they're charging him with a felony or not. He'll be in Monday. They're saying I'm sure they're including a felony. See what they'll do, 
there are several misdemeanors that if you committed the misdemeanor and it was in process of trying to do something else, it then becomes a, a, a felony. Yeah, because it's aiding a felony, the ability for a felony to exist. So, uh, so, so, hmm? so in, 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 in law, some crimes can be a felony or a misdemeanor. It's called the wobbler. Mm -hmm. And they're going to charge the higher crime. And then as the trial goes on and as time goes on, after discovery, they'll actually hold the trial. And, they'll, you know, the jurors will maybe be left up to them if they want to charge them. With well, a you know, you've got to remember that they've taken a year to come up with this decision. And because it's taken them a year, they've really looked at a lot of uh, evidence. And yeah. I don't think they came about this decision, you know, frivolously. So, no, I don't yeah. It. So, I mean, I think they've got some kind of case against him. But I this heard is. That Alvin, Bragg, Alvin Bragg has brought 117 similar cases against New Yorkers in the 14 months that he's been in office. He's brought how many? 117 similar cases. Okay, so that's his specialty. That's what he goes after. Yeah. Now, what what's the thing with them? Who who's that great big donor for the for the Democrats? Uh, Soros. 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 Why why in the world are they bringing Soros into this whole thing? How is he associated with Bragg? He's like Lex Luthor for the Democrats. He's like Lex Luthor. Yes. Right. <laughs> it's just to inflame their base. Come on, it's like a big pure and simple. I mean, but Soros, to begin with, I've always considered I've always considered bringing up Soros's name as being a liberal. It's really saying, "Hey, look, the Jew liberal," you know. <laughs> but what is he anyway, Alex? He, is he a business? Or what well, listen, I I hate Soros because I think he was involved in me get being pushed out of Sirius XM. Oh, so he has an agenda that whole yeah, line. Because yeah. I was very critical of a lot of things about the Democratic Party. And uh, supposedly uh, Soros was somewhat involved with Sirius XM, with with especially that particular channel, and he had a uh, the guy who replaced me was a guy who was on one of his uh, oh. internet things that he supported that he spent money to to run, and so the, a stooge of Soros's took over my spot. I can see that. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, I have no great love for Soros, but what I don't like about what they do with Soros is they're constantly bringing him up as, oh, well, you know, he was a Soros guy and he was put into office by Soros and so on and so forth. And I'm going, you know, you, you, you're just saying it because you may as well just say that Jew Soros, you He's know. Hated. Bill hates him, I know that. Huh? Bill hates him, Soros. He mentioned that in past. Well, he, but he doesn't even know who Soros is. So, you know, he couldn't identify him. In a, he couldn't identify him in a lineup. Okay. There he is. So he has no. Phil has no idea who Soros is, except Soros bad. You know. That's okay. He's texting me too, Tony. What, oh, is he? What is he texting? Is. is he texting yeah. you right now? Yeah. Yeah. Why he is it? He said he'll ask for a change of venue to move to California. Right. Yeah. California. To who I to said move? Texas would be better. There's a lot more Republicans there. Well, yeah, who's going right. to yeah, move to California? Florida. In a petition for a change of venue. Okay. Bill oh. said that maybe he'll ask for California. Oh, that'd be that'd be a great idea, wouldn't it? Stupid. You know. I'd say Florida was more likely. I would say so too. Well, they would try that, but I don't think they'd get it because to begin with, correct me if I'm wrong about this, wasn't the crime supposedly committed in New York and it's New York that's charging him with the crime? Yeah. Yeah, so if that's the case, the, the, the case, the only change of venue you could get was within the state of New York, if I'm not mistaken. I, I think you're right. You know, so, I mean... It's all curious, you know. It's really curious. So we've never, I, we've never had a situation like this in history, have we? History buff, uh, Josh? No, no, it's not really like this. No. I mean, have we ever had a president who's been charged uh, with a felony? I don't think so. No. You know, they may have committed them, but we never found out about them. <laughs> never True. know, right? You know. Yeah. 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 
But I mean, it's just, and this guy, this guy has set a record. Okay, I was thinking about this tonight. He set a record. Not only he, is he the first uh, president, ex-president, to be uh, charged with a felony, or charged maybe with a felony, but also he got impeached twice, which is a record in and of itself as well. So to anybody who doesn't think that Donald Trump is corrupt, come on, you know, three strikes, you're out. Come on, there's the pitch clock now too. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, the pitch clock. Oh, what do you think of the pitch clock? I was watching the Yankee game. I liked it a little bit. I walked away and I missed a couple of. But there's pitches. only one reason why it exists. They just want to speed the, speed game, up up. the game. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. They yeah. want the Yankee game is a half hour shorter than last year's opening day, Michael K. Said after the game. Because of the of the pitch clock. Because of the pitch clock. Because yeah, in case people don't know what we're talking game. about, now when they're playing baseball. They have a pitch clock, and the the pitcher only has a certain amount of time to pitch that ball. I think it's 15 seconds, isn't it? Yeah. Might be 15 or 20. Well, but it's meant to speed up the game. Well, and do and you know what else they want to do? And I don't know if they've done it yet. They want to move the bases slightly further apart. Oh, they, made them, they made them a little bit bigger. They made them a little bit bigger, that. but here's they, they what, here's what's wrong with that. Baseball is one of the math geometrically most perfect games ever created. I mean, the distance between those bases is such that it's a perfect game. You move that know. even by an inch, and you change the whole dynamics of the game. And it was the only sport that didn't have, it was the only sport that didn't have a clock. Yeah, I kind of like the whole sitting at the game with my brother or my friends and just talking about the game. I don't, yeah. I don't like base. I, I love baseball, but they keep changing the game. They want to score more. That's but you know what they, they change it to... for? They change it for number one. They change it for gamblers. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, and they change it for uh, you know uh, besides gambling, they change it for just speeding it up, and so right. they can also because... get more commercials in. Well, because <laughs> the players slowed it down. I mean, the players now, they walk off there, they do their Velcro thing a couple times, and they stretch a couple times, they come back in. They never did that before. Mm -hmm. So because of that, they have to do these things. So, do You really think it's necessary? Isn't baseball... Well, I, I, my, my grandfather played baseball, and all the baseball players there, all the pitchers were the best hitters back then. Mm -hmm. And now you baby the pitcher, and now you don't even have the pitcher bat now, you know, except for... Except for Otani, but everybody uh, I'll, else. I'll tell you what I loved about uh, uh, about it, about baseball, has always been the fact that it's, uh, in a lot of ways, a perfect game, you know? Uh, and it's a, it's a leisurely great game. That's the other thing I liked about it. So what if it takes a little longer? Come on. You're sitting out there, you'll have another hot dog, you'll have some more beer, you'll... Uh, Get a little get sun on your face, you know. Yep. Buster Posey was interviewed on KBR, and he said, uh, "Yeah, he mentioned. He said, well, now maybe people won't be down, staring down at their phones anymore. Oh, so, oh, because they have to watch more closely. Because they got to watch the game. Yeah. So he would look up and see people looking down at their phones all the time. So he said, well, maybe they won't do that now. So, okay. Well, if you want to really speed up the game, uh, play the game with guns." Say 20, the, the preseason, the spring training, they, they shorten the times by 25 minutes. Every, everything's changed. At 25 minutes, more stolen bases, more runs. They had a whole bunch of stats for spring training. So, so they think it's going to be better for the game. Yeah. Or is yeah. it better for the advertisers? That that's my question. Is it better for the advertisers? No, no, than the no. Gamblers? And actually, baseball is the only one that doesn't have. I mean, baseball is set. You, you have commercials either you know, in between innings or when a new pitcher comes in. And that's always been the same. And those times have always been the same. Where ba basketball, they start having so many timeouts and, and football. I, I don't go to watch a live football game anymore mm -hmm. because you're sitting there going, what's going on? Nothing's happening. And then you find out they're at a commercial break for five minutes. You know. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I just, I just think that uh, uh, I just like in the old days, I remember we didn't have baseball games that literally would go so long that they'd have to stop them and finish them the next day. Wow. You know, I remember that happening on one occasion. 
just went on for like 12 hours and they said well let's go home okay it's two in the morning we'll come yeah, back tomorrow no lights back then, did they huh did they have lights did they have lights back then uh they had lights back then except at uh except at uh um where was it uh oh wrigley stadium oh that's when they first got the lights remember when they first did that program and they had the light yeah, yeah, oh yeah. no but you know what where those why they didn't have lights at wrigley why stadium? Didn't they have oh because Wrigley, when they built the Wrigley Building, which is a big building uh, on uh, Wacker Drive and uh, Chicago Boulevard or whatever the street is, I worked in the Wrigley Building. Oh, really? Um, every night, the Wrigley Building was lit up. Well, those lights were supposed to be delivered to Wrigley Field, but Wrigley wanted them sent to the building so it could light up the building. And so for years, you couldn't do a night game Oh, at Wrigley had, Field, yeah. There was, there was always day games there. Never saw a night game. Oh, that's correct. There were always day games. Uh, and then finally, a few years ago, I think they finally sprung for the for the, for the uh, lights. I don't know why they didn't say, hey, you know, come on, we make a lot of money out of this team. We can just put in the lights, can't we? No. Wrigley was too cheap to put in the lights. That's what you get from going for a guy who only claim to fame was chewing gum. Yeah. So, yeah. What did you do at Wrigley? Hmm? What did you do? You say you worked for Wrigley? No, I worked in the, in the Wrigley building, second floor. Oh, yeah. At was, the, W-I-N-D in Chicago. Ah. Yes, I had a, that's where I, I, uh, I worked there for, God, maybe six, eight months, something like that, before I went to New York, before I was picked up in New York mm. uh, to go to WMCA. But I, you know, I would work at the Wrigley Building. Mm. And uh, I remember the worst night of my life, though. Get this one. It gets terribly cold. And if it, Chicago has this thing they call the hawk, the wind, okay? And the wind is such that it just is unrelenting. So if I used to have to, every day, I get off the train that went into town, and I got off, and then I would have to walk across the bridge to the Wrigley Building. Well, as I walked across that bridge, during the winter, if it was really cold, by the time you got to the other side, my mustache would be frozen. Oh my God, but but the worst it. part was when you finally got inside, it started melting. <laughs> I mean, it was not pleasant. It was. Did they not have worse pleasant. winters there than Alex in New York? They probably. Yeah, oh, right? oh my God, Chicago! Are you kidding me? Oh wow. Okay. You know, it becomes frozen tundra up there. You know, but uh, that was my that was my working at the at the Wrigley Building. That and the fact that I worked with uh, Don Cornelius. It was my newsman, and uh, what else? Anybody else I worked with there? That's about it. You know. But anyway, that was my my life in Chicago, which uh, it's an okay in town, Wisconsin. huh? I lived in Wisconsin for a while. I was very close. Yeah, to you you know what I'm talking about then with the weather and, uh, and so on and so forth. It was forth. so cold. Yeah. If we went like to go to somebody's house to play cards with a bunch of other guys, mm -hmm. yeah. we'd all have to bring our cars and take the batteries out of the cars. Really? Wow. Middle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I used to have to go and start my car up a half hour before I got off the air. Right. I'd go out to the, uh, to the parking lot, start it up, because if I didn't do that, it would take me a half hour to warm up the car. So, That's you right. know, that, uh, it got, and that was when I was in Minneapolis. Yeah. Oh, that's anyway, even worse, huh? hey, listen. Thanks to all of you for being here tonight. It's been a nice little discussion. Mm -hmm. Josh Wheeler, always the font of knowledge about things uh, federal, uh, and uh, also Ray. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Ray. Mm -hmm. Thanks to uh, Vernon Nunn for joining us tonight, and of course Jeff, who's down in Florida. How much longer are you going to be down in Florida? Well, Florida, right now. I'm in Atlanta. Oh, and I'm on my way going home. Oh, okay. So we'll probably Driving, see, stopping by this couple of people. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we'll wave at you as you go by. Uh, right. And uh, 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 oh, Brian, thank you. Really appreciate it. Is she still back there? 
No, I kicked her out. Oh, you kicked her out. Daddy kicked her out. And, uh, uh, of course, Tony, terrific. Thank you. Alan, thank you. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. That's our citizen panel for this week. Uh, we'll see you again on Monday on uh, um, uh, Facebook with uh, the uh, pop-up show. And then we will be uh, back here again next Wednesday at uh, 1030. Meanwhile, stay tuned for the lovely and attractive uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, I kept, I'm, I'm about ready to call him by his real name, uh, by uh, Jack Bishop, who does the intersection next over most of the same station. In the meantime, I'll see you next, uh, um, well, I told you I'll see you on Monday, but I'll also see you Wednesday, 1030 Eastern Time, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.